This will be a two-part video article. The first one will be on how to create a content center library, how to create a category with properties or parameters, and then how to add a custom part to this content center library. We'll be using this sensor mount. The second part will be on how to modify and add extra parameters to the existing library. Let's get started. The first step is to create a custom contents in a library, which is read-write. In your project file, pick on projects and you'll see the icon for configure contents in a libraries. Left click on that and you'll see that you can create a new library. Give it a display name and they'll automatically be the file name. I've already done one called BTDB. It's read-write and it's, it's accessible from this project. Say OK and save. I don't need to. I did not create a brand new one. Hit done. The next step is to be sure that your model is fully parameterized. So if I go to a parameter table, you see I have length, height, thickness, my mounting hole spacing, and the sensor hole diameter. So make sure you have that done up front. You'll see why in a second. Next thing, go to your editor, and we're going to create a category for my sensor blocks. So I right click on this, the white and hit create category. It's going to be called sensor blocks. I would like to have images, and I must remind you, they are only bitmaps. It does not take any other form. Bitmaps only. Now the next thing is parameters. These are very important. The parameters are mapped to the parameters of the model. And so this is the link between the custom content center and your model parameters. You try to fill as many of these in as you can because you, you'll see in a second you can't edit them once they're saved. I'll show you later how to add one if you forgot. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and add all those parameters. I'm going to add the first one. You right click on the cell and say add parameter. Left click and then say type in the matching parameter. It's length, if I can spell. It is a real number. It means it includes a decimal. And the units are inch. And you have an option of either saying it's optional or required. Is required in my case. Now I'm going to go ahead and go offline and do the rest of them and come back to you. Okay, we're back. So I'm going to do the last one with you again just to refresh your memory. So I right click on the cell and say add parameter. And then left click on it and start typing. This is the last one. Sensor. If your parameter has more than one word, you cannot contain spaces. So you, I use an underbar, but it's up to you. It is still a real meaning it contains a decimal. It is inch, so I pick on the inch, and it is required. Okay, so now the parameters are filled in. Try to fill in as many as you can because as you see, when I say OK, and I go back to the category and edit the family, the category properties, you'll see they're grayed out. You can't add to them anymore. In the second video, I'll show you how to update these if you need to. Okay, now when you finish that, hit done. Now once your custom content center library and your category has been created, you're ready to publish a part to it. And this is my part, which is the sensor mount. So I go up under content center and pick publish. It comes up and asks you which library you wanted to go to. I only have one read write library and you may have more. So from the drop down, pick it. I want English language. Hit next. The next is pick the actual category. And there's our sensor block category. So I click next. The next thing is to match up the category parameters with the model parameters. So pick on the three dots, hit the plus, hit the plus side model, and pick the matching parameter height to height, length to length, and so on.
Okay, so now once that is done, hit Next. And at this point, you get to pick the Table, Content Center, Table, Key Columns. And I would like to move over the height, the length. I don't need the material as a key column. I want the spacing. I want the part number, sensor, and the hole, and the thickness. You can rearrange them also. I want to put the part number at the top. Uh, probably the next one would be probably the length. It's up to you. And then the thickness. Hit next. At this point it comes up and asks you for the family name. I recommend you put your library name in front of them. So I'm going to put D B T D B and I'm going to copy this and just put it down here. Notice it's already got the down here the sensor block, the folder name. So now I also recommend you put the custom name library in here also or the name of your company. Something that you can search on later very easily. Put it in all three of these areas. This will make sorting out in the content center when you're placing them very easy. And my revision is number one. Hit next. I like the model image. I could change it if I wanted to. And now hit publish. As you see it's successful, say OK. And this part is now in the content center. This part has not been modified. You can use it for your master later on. But let's go to the content center and take a look. There it is. If I right click on it and go to the family table and I'll see the one entry. Let's continue with the part, the uh, family member table. You notice the red columns, they are the key columns you designated in your parameter list. The material was not, nor were the other two. You can change a key column if you need to. Now I really don't like the file name and designation. What I'm going to do is actually put in my part number. It is a center block with a number. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make these match it. So I right click on the column and go to column properties. I notice I want to leave the part number and then I want to get rid of the rest of it. So I'm just matching it. If you want to add something else to these, use the drop down for parameters and you can also use the AND symbol to add text and text is enclosed in quotes. I'm not going to add anything so I'll take it out. If I say OK you see that it matches the part number now. So click on this one and do the same thing. I'm going to just take everything away except the part number because that's what I want. It's up to you. Now the all three match. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add a column. So right click and add a row. Not a column, a row. I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and type this in. I can copy and paste too. I think that's probably easiest. Copy and paste. Probably the best one to paste in is this one because it will automatically populate. Back to here. Now I need to change the number. So you only have to change it one place and it's going to be a 6. And it updates. Now I need to put the parameters in for this particular one. The thickness is the same. I would recommend putting real decimals, put a 0. The sensor diameter, if it has a decimal that is, since the diameter is going to be three quarters, whoops, just what I said, 0 0.75. The length is going to be the same. The mounting hole spacing is going to be the same. And the height will be the same. So I have two entries. Hit OK to publish. And it was successful. Just hit done. OK, I've now moved into an assembly template. Hasn't been saved, but that's OK. I'll go to Place from Content Center. Now, let's talk about filtering. If you hit the drop down, you can actually go to add and edit filters and create your own filter. Notice that the manufacturer and the standard organization, which came from your publishing. That's why I recommend putting those values in there so you can find it quickly. Say OK and it will sort your table to that only. So there's my block. I'm going to simply double click on it. And there are my two mounts. The only difference you see is the actual sensor hole. I'll place the first one as standard. Say OK. <clears throat> I 
There's my part. I'm going to right click and place at the origin. There you go. I don't want any more, so there's the part. Now let's place the other one beside it. Go ahead and place from Content Center. Double click on it. I'll pick the second one. The only difference is it has a smaller center hole, as you can see. Now let's check out where these go when you actually make them. That's very important. All right, they go to wherever your content center is being defined in your project file. So down under folder options, you have your content center, and it says where it is. You can also find it out by right-clicking on the one of those and hit properties. You'll see where it's stored. Now, looking at that, you'll see that under that section, there it is, right uh, there, BTDB center block and they're the two I just developed. Now remember content center parts once they're developed go into your library wherever it's located either on the server or local station and are used the next time it's generated. They only come out of the library once. That's very important to remember. So this concludes actually making a custom content center part, creating a library, your category, and then actually publishing it and then using it in your assembly. The next video will cover some topics about changing parameters. Thank you.